Podcast Morning Show with Mr. Brenner and Mrs. Keeter. Good morning, Trojans, and welcome to the morning show with Mr. Brenner and Mrs. Keating with today's special guest, Mr. Brian from the Croman Elementary. We're so excited to have you today, Mr. Brian. Thank you. Good morning welcome. and welcome. Good morning, Mr. Brenner. Hey, good to see you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, November 16th. If you would all please stop, stand, and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now, if you'd please join me in a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. Now getting on to our show. Um, on to you, Mrs. Keating, for announcements. All right. So we're still looking for pictures for the yearbook. So three different types of photos we're looking for for yearbook photos. Number one, hunting photos. If you have any photos you like featured in the hunting spread, send them our way. Second ones, pictures of you being awesome at online learning. What's your setup look like? Send a photo and let us see what that looks like. How are you staying busy? Are you doing anything cool or interesting during this learning period? Working, learning a new hobby? Send it our way. Send it to the THS yearbook at troyareasd.org. I know that yearbook really needs those photos. I was talking to Mrs. Brenner who's working on the yearbook and they really haven't got too many of those photos yet. They're really excited about some good hunting photos and just stuff that people are doing while they're, they're remote. You know, it's kind of a challenge to do a yearbook when everything is remote. So I know they need your help in order to get those things. So if you guys are able to, please send those photos on to, to that website, THS yearbook at troyareasd.org. Okay, moving on to news. Four astronauts are headed to space today. They're headed to the International Space Station. They took a SpaceX space capsule. This is the second time astronauts have used, utilized a SpaceX capsule. The spacecraft launched from Kennedy Space Center last night and is expected to reach the International Space Station today around 11 a.m. our time. The National Hurricane Center has indicated that Hurricane Iota gained strength with winds of 145 miles per hour, being the same path as Eta took, and it's now becoming a very powerful category for hurricane, and it's expected to have some really, really serious damage. So we got to keep all of those people in our, in our minds and thoughts and, and hope for the best and hopefully things can get a little bit better. But that's, that's one of the main issues here in, in our national news. Um, back to this, the SpaceX for a second there. I have um, a classmate that I went to high school with um, that she works for NASA in um, Florida. And she was part of the team that counted the she's an engineer for NASA and her sons got to help to count the, the space shuttle off yesterday. So that was pretty neat. She had it um, on Facebook last night. So that was a really cool uh, experience that she got to do live with everybody on Facebook last night. So that was pretty cool. That is very neat. Cool. So all the, all the women in science people out there, that was a really neat thing for me to see. Um, so they did like the actual countdown, like the 10, they nine, did, eight. they did, they did, a, they did a zoom, they did a zoom countdown, but her, her son's got to be part of it. So, cause they're doing everything of course, virtually now, which is, which is pretty cool. So it was a pretty, pretty fun uh, experience. Yeah. Even NASA is doing zoom. <laughs> it's yeah. <a> pretty, cool, <laughs> pretty neat and everybody cheering them on and their families. And it was cool. It was a really cool, I don't cool know. experience. I don't know if our viewers know it or not, but our very high tech news reporting um, software is just a recorded Zoom session. So maybe someday we'll get more fancy and high tech, but we've been having pretty good luck with our, our recorded Zoom sessions. You know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the old adage goes, that's what we go with, right? <laughs> All right. So in the world of sports, our very favorite thing, it may not be so favorite for Mr. Brian right now, who I'm sorry, I'm going to break his heart a little bit in a little part of this. <laughs> sorry, Mr. Brian. Uh, so the winner of the Masters was Dustin Johnson. 
So this was his first master's win. And a fun fact, his brother Austin serves as his caddy. Um, and I saw a fun article that referred to them in their youth as dumb and dumber. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was a pretty fun, a pretty fun thing that he has, gets to have his brother as his caddy at this point, winning a, a huge major uh, golf tournament. The excitement continues for the Steelers as they move to 9-0 as the only undefeated team in the NFL. With a 36-10 win over the Bengals, Big Ben threw for four touchdowns and 333 yards after not practicing this week, after being um, in close contact with tight end Vance McDonald um, after he tested positive for awesome. COVID. So we were excited he was able to play, obviously. And our other PA teams, unfortunately, Penn State lost to Nebraska and the Eagles lost to the Giants. Penn State still looking for their first win this season. And number two, Notre Dame continues to roll on with their undefeated season and moves to 8-0 with a win over Boston College. All right, this day in history there, Mr. Brenner. All right, in, 19, in 1902, a, cart, a cartoon appeared in the Washington Star prompting the teddy bear craze after President Teddy Roosevelt refused to kill a captive bear tied up for him to shoot during a hunting trip to Mississippi. In 1982, the space shuttle Columbia completed its first operational flight. And in 1992, Eric Laws, while using a metal detector to search for a friend's lost hammer near Hoxney, Suffolk, England, discovers the Hoxney Hoard, the largest hoard of Roman silver and gold ever found in Britain, and the largest collection of 4th and 5th century coins found anywhere within the bounds of the former Roman Empire. So, some good treasure hunting back in 1992. Nice. On to you, Mrs. Keating, for weather. All right, and thank goodness that uh, the wind is going to calm down a little bit today in that rain because it was pretty, I don't know how it was in the northern tier, but down here it was windy and just it sounded like everything was banging around out there. So today it's going to be a chilly high of 46, um, cloudy and less windy, and tonight we're going to see a low in freezing of 32. It was, it was pretty bad here too. It was pretty bad here in Troy. Um, our our lawn chairs kind of blew across the the porch and we have this ceramic cat that just sits on the porch it's kind of like a decoration and it blew it blew a few feet over and then it was sitting right in front of our doors to the outside which are like big glass sliding doors and our dog piper saw this cat and he just she just she just couldn't stand it she was really not not excited about this ceramic cat being in a different place so <laughs> weather she likes things to be where they're supposed to be <laughs> yeah it might have startled her too maybe she thought it was a real cat i'm not sure <laughs> so, but she didn't like it mm -hmm. in our covid19 update today the u.s has gained about 1 million new covid cases in the last week 133,000 new cases were reported yesterday 246,000 people have now died of covid in the united states last week pfizer announced a vaccine that is 90 percent effective and just today, Moderna has reported that they have a vaccine which has 94.5% efficacy. In the study, 95% participants got COVID who are taking a placebo, and only five who took the vaccine got COVID. So that's some, that's some hopeful news in the world of COVID vaccines. The, the other interesting thing I heard this morning quickly before um, coming down here was that it also doesn't need to be kept in the freezing conditions that... Um, the Pfizer one does either. So they're, they're getting a little better each, each and every day. So it's pretty Very exciting. Good. Pretty exciting. All right. All right. The most exciting part of yes. our day. Welcome, Mr. Brian. How are you? Good morning. Mr. Our patriarch. I'm having a great morning. Everybody's favorite guy. <laughs> Mr. Brian. <laughs> yeah. So Mr. Brian, we, um, we all look to you because you're the principal that has been here the longest. You, um, but so in our district, of course, we have four principals. We have you and Mr. Imp, and we have Mrs. Keating and I. And you are, as Mrs. Keating said, somewhat of the patriarch of our group that you've had all of these experiences. How long have you been a principal, Mr. Brian? I've been a principal for almost 12 years, um, and I've been in the Troy district for 25 years. Wow. Where, did, where did you start out in education? I started in Troy, actually, a long, long time ago, 25 years ago. I started right at W.R. Croman, actually. So it's, it's been 
it's been a long time, but it's, it's been very fruitful in, in my years here because I was able to move from Croman. I went to what we used to have as the Troy Middle School, uh, where I was an assistant principal there, and then came full circle back down to Croman um, after I became the principal there. So it's, it's been a while. I was an assistant for four years at the middle school. And then for a, a period during that time, you were also the athletic director, correct? Yeah, a short period, yep. For about a year and a half um, <laughs> when I was at the middle school, I was also the athletic director. Um, when Miss Abreu was, she went to be principal and then I uh, got to do some athletic directing for a little while, which was fun because as you all know, um, I don't know how much the kids know, but uh, I am a sports fanatic. Um, it's a huge part of my life. Um, and as Mrs. Keating was saying, <laughs> I'm having a rough year with my Penn State Nittany Lions, although I think they're going to turn it around this weekend. Uh, they have Iowa, who's a very good team. But I, I saw some life in the second half of the game this week for the Nittany Lions. So I think, I think they're going to get it. I think they're going to get the ship righted this, this weekend. So, they fought back. They did fight. They did fight back. They, they did. They were down twenty-four <laughs> to three in the first half and ended up making it quite a game. They had the ball twice inside the ten-yard line at the end and couldn't score. So, it's could have tied it up. That's okay. My Dodgers. My Dodgers won the World Series this year. So that's <laughs> that's about the only thing keeping me going right now. <laughs> it's a long season. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be a long season for sure. Uh, hopefully, we get a couple wins though. So as many of you know, Mrs. Keating and I are quarantined and it appears that we'll be returning hopefully on Friday. But Mr. Brian, as he is also a part of our group, <laughs> has found himself quarantined as well. You can see if anywhere you go that Mr. Brian kind of will <laughs> spend time, he tries to decorate everything with Penn State. So <laughs> Mr. Brian, if you just lean over to your <laughs> one side there a little bit, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> that's my fireplace in the basement along with my many signs on the walls and pictures of my kids <laughs> all over the basement just and all about Penn State and I just want you to know that I don't apologize to anybody so that shows you the respect that I have for Mr. Bryant <laughs> because I don't usually apologize <laughs> for saying anything negative about Penn State to anybody but I have such respect for Mr. Bryant that I do <laughs> <laughs> he's one of my favorite people <laughs> but he does have quite a display down there for sure <laughs> yeah so many of our students will remember you as their principal in Croman, and it's been a few years um <laughs> but i wondered if you might just take a little time to tell them about anything that's going on at Croman that might be new and exciting of course we're all working on getting through covid here but um but what's going on at Croman that former Croman kids might want to just hear about well um obviously the COVID has changed a lot of the practices and things that we do inside the building but we were fortunate enough this year to get a new playground um i know most of the high school kids are probably a little too old to use some of the equipment now um but it's a really neat place now that we can use um, even when the weather's bad, if, if the kids remember back at Croman when they were there, every time the weather was bad, we didn't really have a place for them to go. Um, and now they've resurfaced the playground area so that even in poor weather, if it rains um, and the rain stops or if it snows and the snow's not too bad, the kids can still make it from the end of the building to the playground. Um, all we have to do is shovel off the sidewalk. So that, that, uh, that's a big change for us down there so that the kids are allowed to still have recess, um, even in inclement weather. Um, but you talked a little bit about COVID. Um, obviously we are social distancing and we're wearing masks, which we were all quite concerned about initially with the younger kids. Um, but the, the K to two world is doing, and really the K to six world is doing a fabulous job keeping their masks on. Um, following the rules that COVID have laid out for us. Um, and they're just doing a great job. We're social distancing in the cafeterias. Um, certain groups have to eat in their classrooms this year because our, obviously our cafeteria is not big enough um, to put everybody in. But uh, the, the kids are just doing a fabulous job and the, the teaching staff um, are following all the rules, trying to keep everybody safe and healthy. 
Um, and so, and so far we've done, we've done a pretty good job, um, moving forward with COVID. What do you, what kind of things would you like if we, if, if we have older siblings of Proman students in our building that you might ask some of the older siblings to work with their younger Croman students on? Just, just being good role models, showing, showing the younger kids how important it is to wear your mask when you need to. Um, Bradford County is in such an uptick um, with COVID cases right now that I think it's extremely important that our students and our parents understand how important it is um, to wear your masks when you're out and about and, and to follow the rules that are put in place for us. Um, we really have to get this thing under control if we want, if we want our kids back in school. Um, because right now, right now it's getting a little bit out of hand and I'm afraid, I'm afraid if we don't really get it back under control that we're not going to be able to be in school. Yeah, we agree with you there, don't we? And how about um, advice to our, our older kids as, uh, as some, some will be moving on and as they're getting older, what would you, what kind of advice would you like to give them? Um, just, just hang in there. Like th I know this is not an easy time for anyone. My son graduated last year uh, from high school and it was a very difficult year um, for him trying to deal with all the things that were going on uh, in the world. So it, it's, it's not easy for anybody um, but just, just hang in there. This is, we are going to get a handle on this at some point. Um, I'm hearing that there are some vaccinations, um, coming out that, that may be helpful to everyone. Um, we just have to hang in there. Keep, keep doing your schoolwork. Um, don't give up on your grades because they're going to be important to you moving forward. If, if, if you're planning on going to college, or if you're planning on going to a tech, tech school, or even if you're just planning on going into the, the workforce, um, people are going to look at those things to see how you did in high school, see what kind of a worker you are and see what kind of a person you are. So don't, don't give up on your grades. Keep hanging in there. Try to attend school because attendance is going to be a big issue um, coming up for us when we all try and get a handle on how we're going to move forward with attendance. Um, so just, just hang in there. We'll, we'll get to the finish line. That's great. So, Mr. Brian, you're a little bit of a hunter, and I know you, your, your son is as well. You want to just tell us a little bit about your hunting interests and some of the things that you enjoy outside of school? I mean, everyone knows that you're a, you know, a principal in the district, but, but you do have a little bit of a life outside of that, I know. So, what, yeah. what are some of those interests? Well, um, obviously, my sports are a huge interest to me, but with hunting, um, I love to go hunting. My son is an avid hunter. He hunts just about everything. Um, he goes out almost every night uh, hunting for coyotes and fox and those things. And he just shot a 50 pound coyote um, last week. Um, and I have some nice pictures of that. Maybe I'll send them to you, uh, Mr. Brenner, so that if anybody asks about it, you can show them. Um, but he, when we picked his name, Hunter, <laughs> Uh, we obviously picked the right name because that's really, besides schoolwork, that's really all he does. Um, he hunts all the time. Um, he's a bow hunter. Um, he's, he's a night fish, uh, bow hunting fish <laughs> um, in a boat that he bought. Um, so he's, he is constantly either in the woods, on a lake, in a stream. Um, that's pretty much how he spends his life. Um, and he's my 19 year old. And then I have a 27 year old daughter um, who, who is working full time. Um, so really those outside of school, my family is what I spend most of my time doing. Um, we love to go RVing. We go camping a lot, um, just about every weekend. So uh, I used to play softball. Um, I gave it up to you when I hit 50, I gave up playing softball. Um, which was really crushing to me because that was one of the things that I really enjoyed being around all my friends um, and the competitive spirit um, that I have um, made it really hard to give it up. But I, I feel much better for giving it up at this point. My body is, is thanking me immensely because um, there towards the end of my career, playing games on Thursday nights 
and trying to get up Friday mornings for school made it a little rough. So um, <laughs> as, as kids, as you kids will figure out as we move forward, as you get older, um, your body doesn't treat you as well as it does when you're 17, 18 years old. Um, your joints. Yeah, those, those are a lot of the things I like to do. Um, I don't hunt as much as my son does. I, I'm more of a, a deer hunter um, and a coyote hunter. I don't mind hunting coyotes, but uh, that, that's about it for me. My, my son, turkey hunts, um, pheasant hunts, fox hunts, coyote hunts, deer hunts. Like he, he hunts everything. So, and he's got a whole bedroom full of mounts that he has killed over the years. So um, he has a YouTube channel, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Aging okay. the outdoors. So what is he wants to watch. I know actually there's quite a few Troy students that uh, they're, they're probably maybe graduated now because a lot of his friends were um, last year's kids and the year before kids. So, um, but if you want to get on and watch some of his videos, H and E outdoors, he does it with stands for Hunter and Emily. Uh, that's Hunter and Emma. That's his, um, girlfriend. So that's why they named it H and E. But if you want to get on there and watch some of his cool videos, uh, he's got a lot of hunting and fishing videos that they've done together. So. Very cool. Very cool. Um, <laughs> You, you also have some experience, I know, coaching and even playing football, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, when I first started um, in Troy 25 years ago, um, I actually coached football, basketball, and baseball. Um, so I was the assistant baseball coach under Mr. Wesneski. Um, so the kids, the kids will all know Mr. Wesneski. Um, I was the JV basketball coach um, under Mr. Bowers. Most of the kids will remember Mr. Bowers still, even though he's been gone. Has he only been gone a year? Or is it two years now? I think last year was our first year without him. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So Mr. Bowers was the varsity coach, and I was the assistant. Uh, and then I was the head junior high basketball coach. Um, and then I was the varsity football coach. Um, Having played college football at Mansfield um, through college um, made it an easy transition for me to go right into coaching. I actually coached at Mansfield for one year before I came to Troy, um, and it was, it was a very good experience for me to see how all the parts worked, trying to, trying to bring offense and defense and special teams together. Um, it really helped me come to Troy and be ready to coach football at Troy. And we, we, did a, we did a really nice job at Troy uh, the, the years that I was there coaching. Um, my last two years, both years, we went to the district playoffs. Um, ended up facing Mount Carmel in the district final one year, um, which was an interesting game. But uh, we, we had some really good experiences. Um, I had some really good experiences with the kids. Um, and it's kind of funny now because those kids that I coached, then are now the parents of the kids that are in Croman right now. So it's really neat. Um, it's really neat for me to have conversations with those kids about their kids now, because um, I have some good rapport with all those kids from coaching them. So the conversations about their kids are much easier um, in dealing with behaviors or attendance or anything that any negative things that might be coming up with their children. Amazing how it comes full circle, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm even having some kids of kids of kids now, so. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Wow. Yeah. 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 So. All right. Well, Mr. Brian, we're going to need to wrap up here in just a moment, but Mrs. Keating and I were talking, I think, on Friday, and we said, inevitably, one of us is going to have a day where we're out and we're not here. And we're going to need to find ourselves um, a substitute host of the show. So I guess now is as good of ever of a time to ask you if in the future, if we need a substitute um, co-host, if you would consider joining us on the show, if one of us are not able to, to be in. Absolutely. Hey, we got him. Yeah. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You guys, you know, I would help out in any situation. Well, we appreciate it. We're, we're so thankful for the team that we have and, and you lead us and we, we appreciate that so much. We're super thankful to have our team for sure. 
I am very thankful to have all you guys too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you all. All right, now, Troy students, it's time to get to work. Have a great day. Oh, Trojans, this to our joy, a song in praise of the red and white. And honor your alma mater as long as you dare to be true and do right. The good times we've had as the day speed on. Great day.